Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. We would hope that uh, young people would be inspired. Global leaders spent a day with student leaders this past August, sharing their wisdom on how youth can make a difference to help better the world. Speaking of making a difference, a senior at Moana Lua High School is doing a class project that will help make technology more sustainable. Another way young people are learning about global issues is through a student exchange program at Konawana High School that is helping to bridge cultures. Meet a school principal who follows his passion at night as an actor at Manoa Valley Theater. ALS is a debilitating disease, but a mother on Maui is not letting it stop her from keeping up with her six-year-old daughter. Learn how some middle schoolers have solved the problem of everyone bringing the same food to the potluck party. Find out how one teen student at Waianae High School is keeping her diabetes under control. All these stories on this episode of Hiki no, coming to you from Mililii Hipu'u Virtual Academy of the Kuokala New Century Public Charter School. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network. Hiki no, can do. Here we are in the village of Mililii on the Big Island of Hawaii. Kuokala New Century Public Charter School was established in 2002. In 2011, the school established a Hipu'u program, which is a virtual online program around Hawaii Island. It is also attractive to families who are interested in a homeschool environment and a more culturally based education. There are currently Hipu'u sites in Waikoloa, Hilo, Honoka'a, and Mililii. Our first story takes us to a very special event that took place on Oahu, where student leaders had an opportunity to listen to and interact with global leaders. They talked about issues that are important to the next generation. War, political strife, human rights, famine. Society faces conflicts and issues that seem too difficult to resolve. Who will the next generation turn to for answers? With their experience, and their profound commitment to building a better world, let us call them Global Elders. In 2007, Nelson Mandela put together a group called the Elders. The mission that these former global leaders have is to empower people to find solutions to these problems. The Hawaii Community Foundation, through the Pillars of Peace Hawaii Initiative, organized a student talk session between the Elders and student leaders from high schools and colleges from around Hawaii. I kind of want to learn, like expand my like learning. Like our school says, it's, it's a good thing to go to. This is my first time coming, so I'm not really sure what to expect. Well, hopefully, it'll show us more insight on like leadership and what's going on in the world right now, like global events. The elders featured at the event included Grill Harlem Brundtland, Hina Jelani, and Archbishop Desmond Tutu. For over an hour, they talked about how they were inspired to make a change in their mm -hmm. homeland and how today's youth can make a difference. For me, it's interesting to come here and to uh, observe uh, your experiences and to see the cultural diversity and, uh, you know, your belief in Aloha and the thing that you, you are here, as you said, a melting pot of people with very different backgrounds. I think we would hope that uh, young people would be inspired to to go on going on, uh, even when they face uh, opposition. Um, they will have helped to shape the world so that we did not spend so much money on arms and on uh, instruments of destruction. I do believe that women themselves have become very strong now, and there is a strong global women's rights movement which is having its impact, not just on the rights of women, but making for a better society and a better world community. The elders' message seemed clear to those in attendance. Where are you? <laughs> I liked how everybody talked with a passion. They all had like a passion and they all really wanted 
to reach out. They all really wanted to help. They really wanted to make a difference. I really enjoy coming to events like this where I get to meet a lot of different students from other schools and we all have this similar desire to learn about other people in their lives and build a really great global perspective. You know, eventually I hope to change the world, you know, <laughs> make something of my life that I've been allowed to be here and just want to do something with that. So yeah, hope to do that someday. As they exited the stage, the elders appeared confident that this generation of leaders will be ready to take on the issues that we face in the world today. From Aliamato Middle School, I'm Alexandria Omni for Hiki Now. If you'd like to comment on this story or anything you see on Hiki no, join the discussion at facebook.com slash hiki no can do or send us a tweet at twitter.com slash hiki no can do. Hiki no is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hiki no Can Do. Here we are back in Mililii on the South Kona coast. We live on a slope of an active volcano, Mauna Loa. Behind me, you can see the lava flowed in this direction in 1926. Along our coast, Ho'opuloa was one of the larger villages with a store, a post office, and a landing for trading ships. The 1926 lava flow destroyed Ho'opuloa as well as the bay. Because many residents of Mililii are descendants of those displaced Ho'opuloa villagers, the whole region is now generally referred to as Mililii. Just as Ho'opuloa was destroyed by lava, today Pele continues to exercise her power. Access to our parent school in Puna is threatened by the 2014 lava flow. In our next story, we meet a senior at Moana Lua High School on Oahu, who turned his love of science into a senior project that is contributing to sustainable technology. Dustin Palea has always had a love for science. His unique way of thinking and a love for learning has made him into the ambitious student he is today. I love science so much because I like understanding how the world works. I just want to know why things are the way they are. I remember when I was in preschool, um, my dad and I used to watch the Discovery Channel and one of my favorite shows was The Mythbusters and I guess that kind of sparked my interest in science so I did experiments at home like baking soda and vinegar to do like rockets. It started out with little experiments. We tried to make flaming jelly one time. We used to light bottle rockets up, you know, everything was basically science when it came to fun. I was a young kid and I guess as you get older they just get more complex and this is where I am today. Dustin decided to put that love into a senior project, a class required for Moana Luo High School seniors to get the Board of Education diploma. The whole purpose of senior project is to get the students to stretch and challenge themselves and do something different. His project is really new, it's cutting edge, it's not what a typical project is. Dustin was able to work with the University of Hawaii in testing out graphene, a material discovered in 2004 that is opening new doors to sustainable technology. I want to be able to use science to change the world in a better way. Our goal is to find more applications for graphene, just use it in a way that it hasn't been used in before. I don't know, just expand the boundaries. You'll get faster computers, it'll be in your cars, it'll be in all of your like, devices for like, the health that, or, or, or devices within hospitals that help people um, live better. Uh, it'll be everywhere. It's a privilege having Dustin here. The younger you are, you kind of have this like innovative mind and you know that that innovative mind you come up with ideas all the time. Well it's really exciting to see any student, any young person make an impact right away or at least contribute to the effort and who knows where he can go. He's almost going to be able to write his own career. And while he's pushing boundaries in the scientific world, Dustin is also using his project to change himself. I've always wondered if other people are doing the same things as me. I guess through Senior Project kind of forced me to get out in the community. My advice is just put yourself out there. There's people like you. And while Dustin's determination will inspire those around him, he will continue pursuing his dream to one day change the world. I'm Adara Panetta from Moana Luo High School for Hikino. <laughs> now we're back in the village of Mililii. Mililii is often referred to as the last Hawaiian fishing village. 
A renowned local fisherman, Uncle Walter Kili Okekai Paolo, traveled the world sharing our Milili'i fishing tradition. In the 1990s, he returned home to begin work on a memorial honoring five fishermen lost at sea 50 years earlier. State archaeologist Billy Fields helped construct the memorial stone structure, which was completed in 2012. Today, it honors and remembers all the fishermen in Milili'i whose remains were buried at sea. We travel to Hawaii Island for this next story, where three exchange students from Okinawa are learning how student life at Konawaina High School is different from what they are used to. Three students from the island of Kumejima travel to Konawaina High School located in Kealakekua, Hawaii. Staying with local families for three weeks in the month of August, these three young ladies share their culture and build relationships. I think there are very few things that are as powerful as young people making connections with each other with cultures, between cultures and families. In addition to sharing culture, these young ladies also strengthen their interpersonal skills. Not only to learn English, but also to see the world outside of Okinawa. And um, actually, last year, the three students came back to Kumejima with um, improved English skill and also with the confidence to speak to someone you don't know and speak about their own culture. <laughs> One of the exchange students, Surura, comes from a long line of musicians who have played Sanshin in Japan for decades. Surura shares her observations about the structure and students of Konawaina High School. This exchange program is really important because it not only builds international relations, but it also builds friendships and it's still so important for us to build bonds in a time where everything is collapsing. I remember sitting there listening to Superintendent King, and I will never forget him saying, the most important thing about this exchange program is someday I want you to make connections deep enough between yourselves as kids and families that you'll attend each other's weddings. Through the strength of connections, this exchange program has found a way into the hearts of both Kumejima and Konawaina students. This is the Hue Wessel from Konawaina High School for Hikino. <laughs> and now we're back in the village of Middle Ha'apono is a nonprofit organization established in 1980. It promotes community youth projects in Milolii, surrounding South Kona, and Ka'u. The mission of Pa'apono is to support Milolii residents as they develop environmental marine sustainability, youth education, and enhanced cultural practices. Pa'apono has built 52 homes, a water system, and a Levi'a fishing camp. Pa'apono is spearheading the construction of our community center, which is going to be the future site of our school. Back on Oahu, we meet an actor who is a school principal by day and is on stage at the Manoa Valley Theater at night, living his passion. My little darling, won't you dance with me? Miguel Pai Kukui, a 15-year veteran of Manoa Valley Theater, is a passionate actor who shows that the average person can still be bigger than life. Dance with me, hold me close. My first show at Manoa Valley Theater was, I believe, in 1996. Since 1996, I've done 13 shows at this particular 
theater. My mom saw that I was very shy and quiet in school. So she started putting me on stage. I was terrified to be in front of people. My whole demeanor changed and I became, as an actor, you can become anybody or anything and not be judged. It's the best job in the world. Because, so I think she was really instrumental in motivating me to be the performer that I am today. As an educator and elementary school principal, being on stage allows Miguel an invigorating change of pace. I enjoy acting because it's an escape. It allows you to become another person, a storyteller. I love that power. I'm most proud of Les Mis. Uh, being a part of Les Miserables is just, I think, every actor's dream. Um, just to be in the ensemble and even to be as a featured actor in anything. It was just an incredible experience. Godspell 2012. That's an amazing show. I got to play Judas. I, I love that. Those are probably my, my top two musicals. For me, to fill your passion, whatever it is, is so important. It keeps me sane, it keeps me whole, keeps me going, keeps me happy. Um, I'm challenged, I feel blessed, I feel connected. I, I'm just really lucky to, to be able to be a part of, to live my passion and to continue to do it. This is Odessa Tolentino from St. Francis School for Higino. When the music ends. We are back in the village of Miloli. La Inima is a song written by Elizabeth Kuahuya. It tells of a 19th century earthquake in Kaiko, rough seas, that destroyed part of our village. Many homes were swept into the sea. But strangely and miraculously, the Haoli Kamanao church you see behind me was carried hundreds of yards to safety. The villagers feared that their children were carried away, but they returned home the next morning. Our Uncle Walter recalls. And that is why La Ilima is celebrated so vociferously, so enthusiastically. Because where we thought we had lost the future of the village, instead, they were saved. Heading over to Maui, we meet a mom and her daughter who are inseparable. Six-year-old Avalon is too young to understand that her mother has a debilitating disease. Um, drink milky and snuggle and watch a movie together. Six-year-old Avalon Enyarn is her mother Paula's angel, but that doesn't make Paula's life heaven on earth. Hopefully, hopefully in the future families don't have to go through this anymore. Paula hasn't always been this willing to acknowledge her struggle with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, commonly known as ALS. It took me a while to get to the doctors because my, much, of, much of it I didn't want to hear. In ALS victims, the nerve cells controlling muscles fail. Little by little, their body becomes impossible to move, eventually becoming so weak that it no longer works. It's devastating on families. You can never get used to one state of being because something else goes. I live every day in hope and a desire to live and, and have the next 30 years with my family. But it is very rare that we live past two to five years from diagnosis. Paula doesn't want the moments she has left with her daughter to hit any low notes. She doesn't know all that. Not to that extent. Only yeah. some. This September, Avalon School hosted one of the many recent ice bucket challenges that have been flooding social media. This event really hit home when Doris Todd Memorial Christian School decided to keep it local. And then the teacher said, Paula, we want to raise awareness for ALS. And we wanted to stay here and we want to give it to you. And so they gave me the money. <laughs> they all hugged me, kissed me. Oh, I hugged oh, so much. Oh. 
Just because Paula is fatally diagnosed doesn't mean she has to stop living. She still has many more snuggles left for Avalon. Everybody has a choice when they hear that they have been diagnosed with something that has no cure. And I choose to live in a blessed way. I choose to not let it take away the love that I have for my family. I choose for it not to take my joy away every single day. Cheers! This is Sydney Dempsey from Maui High School for Hiki No. Here we are back in Mililii. In the 1960s, rock and roll star and movie legend Elvis Presley shot scenes for the movie Girls, Girls, Girls right here in Mililii. Some residents were extras in the movie. Uncle Sam Grace remembers Elvis's visit. For me, I know what, uh, you know, it was something. Something for me that uh, I'll never forget for the rest of my life. While the village may be different, the house where Girls, Girls, Girls was filmed is still standing. Back on Oahu, we find middle school students at a potluck party where everyone has brought the same food. How will they prevent this from happening again? In Hawaii, a popular type of party is a potluck party. Guests often bring a dish of their choosing to contribute to the menu of the gathering of family and friends. But what if everyone brings the same type of food? Your guests may be unhappy and your party may be ruined. Hey guys, I brought cookies! If you, your friends, and your family have an internet access and have signed up for a free Gmail account, then there may be a simple solution to ensure a well-rounded party menu. Party planners can simply make a Google Doc. A Google Doc is an online word processing document that can be shared with anyone who also has a Gmail account. It is a free application that comes with your Gmail account. Everyone with your permission may edit the document. If several people are online adding to the document at the same time, the change will appear before everyone's eyes. There is no need to resend the document to everyone each time edits are made. The changes are made automatically to everyone's potluck list. As long as everyone signs up for something different, you'll never have to worry about not having enough variety at your potluck event. The ways you can collaborate using a shareable Google Doc are endless. Siblings can use the tool to suggest present ideas for their parents. What a camera, let's get him a jersey. Or friends can use the tool to plan a weekend outing. I wonder if anyone wants to go to the movies. There's a lot of good things playing right now. Hey, how about we go to the game? We hope you can use our tips on using Google Docs to make planning the things in your life easier. Here we are back in Mililii at the Community Pavilion. It's a center for our 250 full-time residents to schedule club meetings and family events. This is also where our school meets, powered by photovoltaic electricity and connected to other academies like ours with high-speed internet access. Here, the Alulike Native Hawaiian Library is an important resource for our education. We now travel up the Oahu coast to Waianae, where we meet a high school student who is learning how to cope with type 2 diabetes, a disease that afflicts way too many teens. I love to eat fast food. Candy bars and chocolate and like eat ice cream like in the morning and some people think they're like, oh my God, I can't do that. For Mylea Sagamore, enjoying her favorite afternoon snacks is not as simple as it used to be. Oh, I love chicken nuggets. In the eighth grade, Mylea discovered that she was one of the 20,000 teens in the U.S. with type 2 diabetes. Can't really do as much, can't really eat as much. I <laughs> obviously did not care because from the Starbucks I just had, um, I kind of really don't take it serious, as I should. Type 2 diabetes is a disease that is primarily caused by poor eating habits. The disease may lead to heart conditions, kidney failure, nerve damage, and even death. I do have to check my sugar. That's mainly thing. I used to um, have to take insulin a lot when I was little. They always had to watch me. It's a chronic lifelong condition teens may not necessarily know how to handle on a physical and emotional level. 
not on their own anyway. Actually, through elementary and kind of intermediate, I was always overweight. So they kind of, my doctors always told me, yeah, you need to lose weight, gotta do some stuff. And you know, going into your teenage years and as a girl, you kind of get depressed about that because your own doctor just said they kind of called you fat. Some, not all teens have adults they could talk to. Not all teens have um, a strong network of people that they feel comfortable talking to. That's, that's this class. That idea of peer support is the same idea behind the development of Viola Clinic, a teen clinic in Waianae that will be opened by the end of the year. So we felt that there was a great deal of teens in the community that are not getting the services they need. The teen clinic is focused specifically on giving teens that sense of privacy. We are actually hoping to not have this be just a clinic where you get medical care, but also be a place where teens can hang out. When most teens think about teen clinics and being confidential and stuff, that's if they're finding out that they're pregnant or STDs or something, not really going for like diabetes. I think... I would use the teen clinic. I brought lunch today, guys. Bread. Until the clinic is open, Mylea will have to rely on the support of her peers. No, but for real, it's, it's hard. Like, I didn't know I had to switch my eating habits. Mylea realizes she'll never be the poster child for diabetes awareness, but it is something she can work towards. I stopped drinking soda, which is really hard because soda was my buddy. I'm kind of laying back on the fast food. Not really as much as I should, but um, I'm just trying. This is Kayla Paolo from Waianae High School for Hikino. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Hikino. Remember, all of these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We've hoped you've enjoyed watching them as much as we like sharing it with you. Make sure to tune in to next week's episode for more proof that Hawaii students hiki no can do. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.